Have you ever wondered if Tesla's regenerative braking actually saves energy? Well, today I'm putting it to the test. I am driving with full regen and then I'm turning it off completely and seeing what the difference is. So stick around. All right, welcome back to the channel. Dan here from North Tesla. So today we are talking about regenerative braking. Now, a while back, I did a video uh, with my Tesla 101 series all about regenerative braking, how to use it, what it's for, and all that stuff, explaining what it does. And a lot of the comments were in there saying, I'm either people are hate regenerative braking, they don't want to drive a car that they don't have control of, they find that it uh, you use more power going down the hills because you actually push the accelerator going down a hill because regenerative braking tries to stop you. Uh, so I'm putting, I'm going to test those out. I'm going to see if I can break those myths and see if we can actually figure out how much energy is saved by regenerative braking. Now, you may be asking yourself, how am I going to do that? Well, let me tell you. I have an accessory, which I think I have a video either coming out before this video or after this video, but it's going to be an accessory on Test Logic. They have a little module and a phone app that basically gives you all this access to data and a few car functions as well. And one of those car functions is the ability to control your region down to the percentage. So you can go any percentage you want, but I'm going to test 150 and zero. Uh, so before I do though, let's get into it. Before I do though, please take a second and subscribe. You get better content, better accessory reviews, all kinds of stuff like that. So, and it helps me grow my channel. So it's a win-win for everyone. So go ahead and do it now. To test this, I'll be driving the same route three times. Once with 100% regen, another time with 50% regen, and then no regen at all. We'll then track the energy consumption and compare the results. So let's get started. All right, so we are starting off with the control test. So this is 100% regen braking, as normal as every Tesla right now has. So you have no option but to use 100% regen. Uh, you no longer have the option to set it to low. So we're gonna take the regen control and then take it all the way to zero. That's when I go like from start like from I mean from like one extreme to the other to see what the difference is. All right, so we have no regen, completely, completely like you're driving an ice car, and we are off. So this is actually gonna get some use getting used to because I don't have regen. So I'm gonna try to coast as much as I can just to save some. Um, Oh, this is weird. So I guess the difference is going to be like, what's going to save, like with regen, so I'm on the brakes right now. So with regen on, you're obviously going to, you know, save some energy, put that energy back in the battery. While the difference with coasting is yeah, if you coast and not using not using accelerator, you are not wasting energy or using energy, uh, but you're still gonna have to brake, which is a hard on your brakes. Well, not hard on your brakes, but it's going to wear down your brakes, uh, and you're not putting that energy back into the motor. So let's just see exactly how much energy we're gonna save with regen. All right, so I finished all the testing, and a couple thoughts on the testing method. Now, first off. It is a short route, and the reason for a short route is one, it's only 10 kilometers, so I wanted a route that I can do multiple times over and over again without wasting the entire day away. And secondly, I didn't want other factors to play into, into account, like such as climate, as well as the temperature, as well as traffic altogether. So it was a short route, uh, but I really maximized the hills as well as uh, frequency of stops, like stop signs and stuff like that. Uh, so I really got a good idea of how much the regen system worked. Uh, the other thing is that I originally set out to do three runs, basically one with full regen, one with no regen, and one with 50% regen. And I also wanted to try out autopilot. 
So what I did is I did the route again with autopilot with full regen, as well as autopilot without regen. And what I noticed is that even with uh, without any regen, it was still, I can see on the TestLogic app that uh, energy was still going from the wheels back to the battery. Therefore, I'm pretty sure that autopilot overrides that no regen function because it was the same results both ways. So the other thing I noticed is that when I went back and looked at the footage of the first three tests, uh, with a full regen, I used the brake about a dozen times, and that is not like me. I don't use the brakes usually at all while driving with full regen. And I think the reason for that is I was too concentrated on the actual speed I was going. I wanted to make sure there was a set speed throughout the run, and I was too focused on maintaining that speed, so I was using the brakes more than I would normally. So I did the uh, this test again, uh, both full regen and no regen, and more of a casual approach, more of a day-to-day -day driving than I would normally drive and not paying so much attention to the speed. Uh, so yeah, so... I bet you're excited for the results, so let's get right into them. So my first two runs with full regenerative braking, it's a 10 kilometer route, and according to TestLogic, I saved four kilometers. And I used one kilowatt hour. Now, the watts per kilometer, which is the most important thing, because that's how much energy you're using to go one kilometer. Uh, the first one was 118, and the second one was almost six for an average of 112. Now, switching over to the no regenerative braking. Now, for the same 10 kilometer test, I used two kilowatt hours. Now. I don't have a decimal point, so I don't know if the first tests were like 1.9 and this was like 2.1, uh, so not that much of a difference, but it is a difference altogether because both runs ended up with two kilowatt hours. Now, the big telltale sign is the kilowatt hours per kilometer, which was 152 and 150, therefore an average of 151, which is significantly higher than the 112 with full region break. Now, moving on to 50 regen braking, and it is what you expect, uh, kind of halfway between. Uh, I did say four kilometers, used one kilowatt hour, and my watt hours per kilometer were 121. So in terms of brake use, uh, with full regen, the first test, I used the brakes 14 times. Uh, with the second test, I used the brakes not at all. Uh, with no regen at all, the first test, I used the brakes 23 times, and the second one, 20 times. Uh, interesting to note, with, I didn't mention the results from the autopilot drive, but I did say five kilometers with the autopilot drive and used one kilowatt hour and my watt hours per kilometer are 144. So slightly less than no regen at all, but a little higher than uh, the full regen. And I used the brakes 28 times. Well, the system used the brake 28 times, which is a lot. So very different style of driving with autopilot. So after crunching down all the numbers, I can honestly tell you that yes, regenerative braking actually saves you quite a bit of energy. Now, you may be asking yourself, it's only a 10 kilometer run, uh, it's not very long, and the numbers for kilowatt hours were kind of similar, one versus two, so you know, they're kind of close. But the very telling number is the watt hours per kilometer. This is essentially your mileage. That's how Tesla figures out your range for the car. The Tesla Model 3 long range is actually rated around, I think, 120 to 130 watt hours per kilometer, uh, depending if you're driving higher, so you'll get more or less, and obviously the temperature as well. So with the first route of not ha having full regenerative braking, I got an average of 112 watt hours per kilometer, which is very low because um, I was driving like lots of hills, was able to really use advantage, take advantage of that regenerative braking. So if you translate that, that 112 uh, watt hours per kilometer to the full range of the car, I would actually get a whopping 696 kilometers or 432 miles. That is huge. So obviously, it's, you're not going to get that all the time because of various conditions, but for this test, that is huge. Now, then when you compare the watt hours per kilometer for the no region, that was 152. So if you take that number and calculate your range, you're only going to get 516 kilometers or 320 miles. So you're getting an extra 100 miles of range with using region. So I hope this puts to bed all the people out there who say, oh, I don't want region. It doesn't really save that much. And it's not worth it. I want uh, full control of the car. So yeah, if you want full control of the car, by all means, uh, get a car that has no regen, but you will not be getting as much range and you'll be changing your brakes quite often. All right, if you don't want to listen to me and you still want no regen in your Tesla, you are going to have to get the TestLogic module, which is available at testlogic.co. Uh, head over there, you will have a review in a couple weeks for that, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but if you can't wait, use Norton Tesla for 10% off. It does uh, tons of awesome stuff other than uh, controlling your regen, uh, tons of data available in your car, you'll enjoy it, so stay tuned for that review. All right, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss videos, which I release about every week or so. Tons of awesome Tesla content like this, accessory reviews, how-tos, tips and tricks, and Tesla 101, all things to enjoy and get to know your Tesla even better. Uh, so yeah, thanks again for watching and we'll see you next week. In the meantime, drive safe and drive electric.
and also don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification uh so anyways thanks again for watching and if uh wasn't so different one compared to the two uh but the big teller the big so you may be asking yourself the so you may be asking yourself the so you may be asking yourself the test run was was kind of short and my watts were, uh, my kilometer my kilowatt hours two runs i did so starting off with my full so starting I've got it now.